Okay, so we're going to talk about movies that were made in Tennessee while we're on our road trip, which our road trip has nothing to do with Tennessee. However, we are going there in a few weeks, so this is like preparation. And the first movie we're going to talk about that was made in Tennessee is Black Snake Moan. This is totally Jacqueline's pick. I love it. Why um, do you love it? Um, I don't know. I love Samuel L. Jackson. I think he's amazing. Um, I don't know. I love just the, like, the dirtiness of it, basically. Justin Timberlake is in that, isn't he? I know, he is. Mm -hmm. um, so the reason I don't like Black Snake Moan... I like Moan, the music, too. Okay. So the reason I don't like Black Snake Moan... Well, first of all, I just don't like the movie. <laughs> but I saw it in Atlanta... Um, at a screening where the director was there and he was sitting directly behind me and all I wanted to do was leave but I felt really bad leaving and the person I was with left so I was just stuck there by myself watching this damn movie because I felt bad leaving and I don't know I just didn't get it I just didn't get it maybe I'm not like enough of a film aficionado I didn't no. get it I liked it I thought that like the whole backstory of him is good and she's so like messed up in the movie and I mean what are the odds that this 60 year old black man is gonna like fix this twisted like screwed up 20 something child you know white girl and then they end up like you know he's like her mentor I don't know I like the basis of it all right let's pick number one okay Jacqueline's gonna give us the second pick okay so our second pick is country strong um, I love this movie. First off, let's talk about how hot Garrett Hedlund is. I mean, hot. So hot. So hot. And then, of course, you have, um, what's her name? Gwyneth Paltrow or no, Blair um, Waldorf? Blair Waldorf. <laughs> I mean, she's internally will forever be Blair Waldorf mm -hmm. to me, but, um, uh, Leighton Meester. Yes, Leighton Meester, correct. Um, I would say, actually, um, Gwyneth is the weakest character. Totally I thought. agree. Totally. Um, she's not really that good of an actress. Anymore. No, she's she real. Mm -hmm. And then, and she's not that good of a singer. I mean, she's fine. She can sing fine. She can hold a tune, but yeah. So, and then, of course, Tim McGraw is in it, and um, he's great. And he's so good. Like, I honestly uh, didn't really realize um, uh, how good of an actor he was until maybe that was, like, the first film, I guess, because it's not, I mean, it's kind of technical cheesy I guess but right it's like a drama and I just feel like he plays that really well and you, of course you never see him in that like no one ever sees him I think as like the actor but he really is a good actor well I think after he did um the the blind side yeah that was kind of when people realized he could act but really he was in Friday Night Lights which I think was his first acting gig and he was so good at that. he's really good in Garrett that like Hedlund he's such an that. asshole he played Garrett Hedlund's dad oh that's in funny Friday Night Lights so that and was his second appearance I just learned during South by this year, I didn't know this, that Garrett Hedlund, Hudland, whatever, however you say his name, dates Kirsten Dunst. Really? And apparently has for years. Wow. I don't see so, that match at all. But yeah, I did. Oh, we just hit traffic, kids. Yay. <laughs> I'm so Sorry. glad I switched to let Jacqueline drive. So, so speaking of Kirsten Dunst. She's in the third pick for movies made in Tennessee, and it's Elizabeth Town. Jack has not heard of it, or doesn't no. hasn't seen it. I realized I, when I was reading about it that I have seen it, but it was a long time ago. But I know a lot of people like this movie. Orlando Bloom, Kirsten Dunst, Susan Sarandon. Orlando's home for like his father's funeral or memorial in Tennessee, and falls for Kirsten, who's this uh, flight attendant, and she like seems super cool and perfect, and you know, people usually aren't perfect, so. I mean, is it like a romantic or is it like a thriller? I mean, no, it's a it? romantic. It's like a kind of a coming of age, like learning about life. like oh, Typical Kirsten movie. Yeah, and it's Cameron C Crow, so he always does like good, he's a good storyteller. So, um, yeah, so that's the number three pick. All right, Jacqueline has our number four. So our number four is a really great, mo uh, great movie, but a great book as well. Um, the John Grisham thriller, The Firm, with... Uh, crazy Cruise. Cruise. Crazy Cruise. Before he was crazy. <laughs> I'm about to plow into a car. <laughs> this is what happened when, you're, uh, when your shotgun is like, let's make videos, and you're driving <laughs> in construction traffic. Oh my gosh. Um, so yeah, this was like Tom Cruise, like early days, not early like Top Gun and Risky Business, but still pretty early days. Like Free he was a Scientology. 
well, he might have been a Scientologist, but he wasn't crazy Pretty Scientologist crazy. shit. Um, but yeah, I think this was the Grisham movie that really like introduced, like it was this and then all of a sudden all Grisham books were made. It was like, from this it was like Pelican Brief, mm -hmm. the, client, the Client, A Time to Kill. So this was really the one that kicked it off. Um, but yeah. So, so good. That's our number four. The Firm with Crazy Crews. <laughs> Alright, so number five is Goodness Gracious Great Balls of Fire. Oh so god. Uh, Jerry Lee Lewis story. Stars Dennis Quaid. Dennis Quaid makes a lot of our lists. We love Dennis Quaid. Um, Winona Ryder plays his cousin. His cousin whom he married <laughs> in real life. And who was very, very young, too. Like a young and teenager. Like 13. And it's his first cousin. Super creepy. Ugh. But he's a good musician, he's talented, and he's kind of crazy, which obviously he married his cousin, but um, just his whole music style and everything. And Dennis Quaid plays him like perfectly. And then, like, random side note Alec Baldwin is in this movie, and he was also in Elizabethtown. We're going to string it together. Maybe he'll be in another one on the list. Who knows? You're going to have to wait and we see. Keep, like, this keeps happening. It's exactly. Good. Great transition. Just like this traffic keeps happening. All right, number six choice. Is the Green Mile. It actually took place in Louisiana. Uh, and it was one of Stephen King's only works that doesn't take place in his native Maine. It's so weird. It is weird. But shot in Tennessee. And oh, Tom, uh, Hanks. Tom Hanks and Michael Clark Duncan. And a lot of people actually. It has a really, really great cast. And the story itself is also like very moving, very dramatic, but very moving. It's pretty deep. It is really deep. And I haven't seen it. I don't think I've ever seen it again. Like I think I only saw it like in the theater. I don't know if I ever watched it again, and I probably do to watch it again. It's really good. Because yeah. I'd probably get different things out of it now than I did back then. But um, but yeah, I, it was a great movie, and you know this was like kind of the beginning of Tom Hanks really like every role Tom Hanks took was amazing. was amazing exactly I don't think there's honestly I don't think that there's a single film of his that I don't like oh no there's not any that I don't like but he did some of those goofy things you know like and not yeah. even big that's not like, even goofy but like the red the man with one red shoe right. like back in the day when he was first getting into the movie oh, and the business was splash. he was in splash yep um the Joe versus the volcano, like those are just a little yeah. goofier. But I mean, you know, once he did like a drama film, actor. once he did Philadelphia, that was really oh, it. Like everything yeah. since then, like he's so just, good. He only takes good roles, so um, so yeah. And and this is one of them, so definitely worth checking out. All right, number seven choice: Water for Elephants. Now I've never seen this film, oh, so. It's so good. I read the book too, and I love. I am the type that if it's a was a novel that's turned into a film I, I like to read the book first so I loved the book and you know I love Reese Witherspoon too so who is also from Tennessee she's from Nashville mm -hmm. and she's in the film that was filmed in Tennessee yeah and I know that I should see it um who who's plays the guy in it Patterson or yeah the kid from Twilight yeah. right okay what's his first name um Robert Pattinson. Robert Pattinson. Yeah, the only thing I know about the film, I mean, it's about the circus, right? They're in the circus? Yeah, it's like the 20s, and they're on this traveling circus. And Yeah, the only thing I know about it is that, like, two years before I started at Fox, they filmed the parade scene, and so in, like, um, the New York Street area on the lot, they made it look 20s, like, laid down, like, straw on the road, on the, you know, so there was no paved street or whatever, and actually, like, had el the elephant, like, yeah, coming it. down the street, so I was totally bummed that I wasn't working there yet yeah. to see that, because that would be amazing, yeah. but. I loved the costumes and everything about the film, too, because that was, like, my favorite era, so I just thought they did so such a good job at the, the costumes and the just everything was awesome. Well, it's another one for me to put on the list. <laughs> Alright, so we almost forgot this movie and I can't believe we could forget this movie. It's one of my favorite movies. Um, I Walk the Line, or Walk the Line. Walk the Line, yeah. <laughs> um, again, Reese Witherspoon. Yes. Tennessee native, which we already mentioned in our Joaquin. previous pick. Joaquin Phoenix. Um, I think the greatest thing about this movie is that they had to learn to play the instruments like 
June and Johnny, and uh, which because wasn't so particular. They were right. so like no other. Right, no. which wasn't as difficult for Reese, but for Joaquin to play the guitar the way Johnny does, because Johnny holds his shoulders up and plays it really high. Um, and it's just he's so good, and Joaquin has like that um, what do they call a hair lip, mm -hmm. and you don't even know like he looks. I just think he's Johnny Cash in that movie. Like, I don't even see Joaquin Phoenix. It's and he so like, weird. totally trained himself to sound almost, he sounds so much like him too. Like, right. that burly, like, rusty voice that Johnny had. And, yeah. Um, that no one can replicate. He did such a good job doing that in that film. Well, Reese um, was really the driver of that. I saw it in an interview. Like, they had, obviously, coaches. And it was really Reese who was, like, she's very, like, per, like, very, um, organized and like okay this is where we're going this is where we need to be and Joaquin is not so he talked about in an interview that it was really her that took control of that and was like this is where you need to be and this is who you need to be with and this is what you need to learn to do and um which is funny and great that she won an Oscar because that even adds to how dedicated she was to the role but um yeah I just I, I really really love the movie and I love June and Johnny and I agree with you like they sound so much like them actually in all honesty, I think Reese sounds better than June, and I also think Reese looks better than June. I think they made Reese way more together than June looks, but that's just my opinion. I would keep that low. <laughs> it's not low key now. I'm putting it on the internet. But um, yeah, I uh, there isn't anything I would change about that movie. So good. Absolutely love it. Oh, a perfect transition into our number nine pick is that Tim McGraw is in it and we've talked about him going from uh, singing to acting and this and one of his other films is on the list on the list mm -hmm. and this one is The Blind Side The Blind Side it's such a great movie gosh I love this movie um, I actually am kind of obsessed with Leanne Tui. I follow her on oh Instagram. Gosh. She's so She's great. So awesome. She always replies. Like, I have tweeted and Instagrammed her during football season because the son plays for the Panthers now. And so I would, I like took a picture of him when I went to training camp and tagged her and she responded. And yeah, another so time, cool. like, I said something about, like, can't wait to head to the game and see your boy play. And she responded to that. So it's really cool. And then um, the daughter actually just got married. So there are some cute family photos that you can see on Instagram. And she also has a cookie company called Whimsy Cookies. I didn't know that. Uh-huh, in Memphis. And they do these really, really cute, like, custom cookies. Like, if you wanted them for a party or whatever. Um, yeah, they're really, it's really fun to follow her company on Instagram just to see what, what, what kind of neat cookie somebody has ordered. Yeah. So, um. I just thought, honestly, too, like, Sandra Bullock could not have played a better role. She such a good job like like um, <laughs> like basically transformed into this woman I'm not laughing because of that I'm laughing because every every list so far has her on it and uh for Ashley I'm gonna have to say her name because the way I say it is Sandy Bullock that's correct <laughs> we talked about it we talked about South Carolina yep. films mm -hmm. Sandy Bullock yeah my pal Sandy She's so good in this film, and I think that Leanne uh, has to be proud of the way she oh, pulled yeah. this off because she was just Definitely. like epic in this film. And who is the guy who plays Michael? He man, really I don't even know. Him. Have we seen him in anything else? Like, probably not. I don't think so. But right. he is really good. He I is so good. See how it could probably be hard, like uh, being able to like do any other films that aren't. Right, because he's such a big he's guy. Such a big guy. Like, yeah. So, like, athletically, background, storyline, I feel like it's hard for him to transition out of that. Well, you know, when we're talking about, we already talked about the Green Mile and Michael Clark Duncan. And, you know, Michael Clark Duncan obviously played a lot of, like, big, like, security yeah. type guys. And so, probably had the same situation, but then look at a movie like The Green Mile. Or he played this like movie after that though. <laughs> yeah. But he played this like very sweet, soft, like gentle giant. So I guess he could do that. He could do the, this actor could do the same but kind that's of role. Kind of what this was. Right, you exactly. Know, come, you know, Michael came from the hood in Memphis and you know, 
was this huge guy, but you know, was so quiet and I guess assume like was just quiet and kept to himself and is very reserved and passive. But he's like a diamond in the rough, you yeah. know? I just I just love his story. Beauty shine through. I just think it's so great. All right, we are going to sing our final pick for you. Are you ready? Yeah. And I'm proud to be a coal miner's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, is she going to join in? Or is this a solo? Uh, um, coal miner's daughter. What a great, great, great movie. So good. Can I say it again? Great. So good. Movie. That is like that film is one of those for me, like you said about Walk the Line, how um, or we said about Walk the Line that they like pretty much transformed or and Blindside like that character. Oh, yeah, that agreed. Just, you kind of forget that they're not really the character. Yeah, or they're totally. Not really, the person. She Sissy Spacek did. I mean, I forgot. Anytime I watch the movie, I keep forgetting, like, this is not really... Exactly. No, totally the same way. Loretta I think, Lynn. But... And I think as a child, like, I thought that Sissy Spacek was Loretta Lynn. Yeah, she like, even looks like her. It's crazy. So good. So, so good. good. And it's just, you know, it's like, I think Ashley and I have talked about this. And, or no, we talked about it maybe in the Carolinas one. Like, it's so cool when it's like... A different era. Oh, it was when Ashley and I talked about um, Forrest Gump. You love a movie that can teach you also about a different generation or yep. a different era. And that's how I feel about Coal Miner's Daughter because I would know nothing about yeah. like rural Tennessee. And it would make you, it makes you appreciate not it does. Being from rural Tennessee right. in the 30s. And the whole, the, you know, the, her whole story, it's like the she had so many kids and they had like no money and the abusive husband the alcoholic and then staying with him like it's a whole different generation and lifestyle that I for that too can't relate but, to what's his name do 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 mm -hmm. and let's just talk about how who is the actor yeah it's total I don't know why he it's escaping so me because he's so good but um, so young we, I don't know why I can't think of who, who it was at the moment but I'm in a super anyways, right here. He's really good. So, yeah, I just forgot for any time I watch it. I just forget. Yeah. That she, you know, because she did such a good job. And that, again, should be one of those films that Loretta Lynn can look and say, thank God this woman played me because she is spot on. Well, and how about the fact that it was made in the 70s? How much has, how much has happened in Loretta's life since then? I, I mean, that was only through the 70s. Yeah. And Loretta Lynn is still out there killing it. Killing it. I mean, she played a show in Charleston last year. You know, she did that, that album with Jack White, which was awesome. She's just brilliant. Um, she is brilliant. She's brilliant. And I love, um, so, you know, she had, I think one of my favorite parts of it is her connection with Patsy Cline. Yes. Um, I am such a, pa I grew up on Patsy Cline. I grew up on, like, old country music. Like, my dad, pretty much all he listens to is, you know, old country and, on vinyl and grew up with Loretta and Patsy and that being played on the, on the, you know, on the record player, on the record player <laughs> while I was going to sleep and stuff like that. So I loved learning more about their relationship and how close they were. Yeah. That was cool too. Yeah. And, and on sadly crazy is not as good of a film and I wish that it was, but, it's not, but it, I mean, it's good. But yeah. It's definitely not cool. No, so that's our number one pick. Yeah. Um, also, my apologies to Tommy Lee Jones. We should really remember Tommy Lee Jones. Yikes. Yes. Oops, Sorry a daisy. about that. <laughs>